Welcome to the Video Ranch Studios, John Searing. Thank you, Des. <laughs> Happy to be here. We're, how far are we from Marfa? Do you know by all chances? Uh, 1,200 and some odd miles, 1,230 okay. or something like that. And when do we leave from Marfa? Well, I'll be there ahead of you. Yeah. I got to set up this thing. I'm leaving Friday and I'll be there on uh, Monday night surveying oh. the land. How long do you think it'll take you to build it? Three or four days. I have a crew of uh, four friends help me out. It took three months to paint, but it should take about three days to look it up. So, and it screws together, basically. Yeah, concrete. And, and this, this is the, this is basically a banner for what you're doing, and the gold star for where Marfa is, which is in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but we're going to make it somewhere. That car is going to be there. That's only, it. that's a piece of it. There'll be, um, I'll give you a, well, I'll show you. Yeah, let's actually show, the, show and tell. The entire mural. Move it toward the camera. You see the, oh, no, there's the car. I said, I decided to have Rock Hudson driving the car. Uh, James Dean, iconic shot of James Dean. Uh, not actually from the movie, but uh, a shot, a still from the movie. And the iconic mansion in the background. Right. Uh, although I'll be showing the mansion in a dilapidated state years after the filming, because it's more interesting to me yeah. than the, uh, the nice shiny uh, mural. And Elizabeth Taylor, and uh, we'll be back there as well. Little tiny Liz. Well, I'm doing a, what I'm wanting to do is uh, uh, play with the perspective of the viewer driving by in, in their cars. Yeah. The mansion is 80 foot tall in reality on a set. I can't build an 80 foot tall. I can't do it. I'm not an no. engineer. It would take me forever to do. So I've got it about 16 foot tall, but by having a small little Liz Taylor, you force the perspective. Force the perspective, and you set back away. So I'm hoping that when you drive by. It'll bring the mansion back to the viewer's memory of the movie. Well, all the work that you've done around here, which, for those of you who don't know, is uh, the uh, Monterey Peninsula area and the Carmel Valley, uh, <clears throat> has that forced perspective. I remember when I saw the first piece of the two giant uh, guys. Uh, field workers? The field workers, yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was fantastic because they were huge. And then suddenly I looked down and I saw the intersection. And so here are these guys like this. And I looked down and I see the stop sign. The stop sign's like this. <laughs> which was, which was a, a real great way to mess with my reality at the time. Well, I hear from people who say that it scares them, these giant images. Yeah. And it, when I first started doing the giant images, I didn't know how big to make them. I didn't know because I used to work life-size. And I learned early on, yeah. when I was putting my life-size figures next to a building or wherever, that you're looking, it's too hard to see when you're driving by. Uh -huh. well, what was that? What was that? <clears throat> I needed to make it a more comfortable thing yeah. when you drive by to see my work. Yeah. So I guessed, I don't know, 16 foot tall seems like a good size. I can get giant posts, 20 foot posts, stick them in the ground. Yeah. Maybe that'll work. Well, I kind of stuck with that ever since. Uh -huh. so. Well, and, and, and when you change the size of it, when you drive by at X miles an hour, it goes from that to that. Yes. Yeah. And you get the train look of it, and that's that's when it turns into magic for me. Oh yeah. And I really, you know, I learned from billboards. People, they yeah, know what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. They want as many seconds on your eyes to see clearly the message as you're driving by. So um, I angle them like billboards are angles, so you can. You don't worry about the other side of the traffic. You worry about the one side of the traffic closest to the the road. And you can get three or four seconds. That's all you need. Yeah. Well, don't worry about the other side. They'll see it because mm -hmm. they'll be going the other way eventually. And they'll yeah. see it. How do you compare? This is a wrong question. Just take it and do whatever you need to with it. Because I, I, don't, I don't have any preconceived notions. How do you compare this to Prada? The, oh, the, well, when I was first introduced to the Prada Marfa, in 2005, it was, it was erected. I was told by people, you got to go to Marfa. I'd never heard of Marfa, oh. but I'd heard about this art piece before <clears throat> I did the town. Um, I loved it because it was out of place. Yes, and my things are out of place. Yes, why here? Uh -huh. And that's it's it, it's a message is sending these artists yeah. that, that, that that, and I love that. Yeah. But I love more than anything that it's out of place. Yeah, and you got to wonder. I need that part of the viewer. Why? I want them to think about it. Why yeah. is this here? Yeah. Their their message might have been consumerism. Um, mine's not so deep, maybe, but uh, well, but I like the idea of putting something. My little entertaining things are just 
in the middle of nowhere. I need that. Mm -hmm. I don't want it next to a Walmart or a no, gas station. No, no, no. Nothing around it because your mind is in a place. You're lulled. Yeah. And you're driving. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I want that moment. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah. Well, that's the moment you get when you're driving down that long road off of uh, the interstate that goes through El Paso. And you got 183 miles to Marfa and on a two lane. Yeah. And that's a that's an and, and as far as you can see in both directions. Yes. Uh, you can't. It's flat. Yeah. Flat and somewhere out there is the western wind. Yeah. <laughs> but it was your the idea that one of these pieces up here would show up at Marfa as a kind of uh, a transit quality to it to the piece itself. Yes. So as a piece starts to live. And you go, How did they? I, didn't I see that? It, I, but no, you didn't. That was a that was a '57 Chevrolet that was on the side of a of a car shop, and and it connects in that way. I've stood outside that uh, piece of yours down uh, Fremont. Oh, Del Monte. Del Monte. Yeah. For you know an hour eating a taco from Jose's across the street, yeah. studying the picture. <laughs> because the detail of it is is fine, and there's something else too, uh, John, that goes into goes to your work, but you can tell me I'm crazy and just shut up if you want. The, <clears throat> there is a, um, there's a reality that occurs when you change the perspective that we don't have unless you change the perspective. So when that happens, it's, it, 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 for me, it made the hair stand up on my arms. That's what happened with the two field workers. I said, Victoria, did you see that? <laughs> and Victoria said, what? And I said, no, that's, that's not generous enough. And I said, what? And I said, that right there, do you see that? No. So he turned around and went back and, oh. and, took, and took a look at it. And I said, look, and look at the perspective. That's, a, that's, that's 400 acres of lettuce heads in behind them. <laughs> and these, these two giant figures with the thing. And <clears throat> I thought at that very moment that I have to call this man and see if he'll make something for my uh, house or for for sale. And Victor, uh, uh, Jessica and I, who was my assistant at the time, just started talking about it nonstop. We got to call Sarah. We got to have him do it. And then we were pulling into her shop, which is at uh, grocery store in downtown Carmel Valley Village. And she said, I'm going to call John Surrey and see if he can do one of my children on the side of this building. And I said, oh, if you do that, I'll pay for it. She said, well, I think I can pay for it. But um, I said, that is, that's a community contribution of the first order. And I think it is. I'm going to go buy that. I just smiled. We went, we went and had something to eat at the store. Just got out front of mural just looked at it. but it's not a mural my mother did a mural i'm doing all the talking i'm sorry i'm gonna shut up that's okay my mother did a mural in a theater in texas and i was i was uh, fascinated by the technique and uh, i wonder if you would mind because you may seem a little mundane to you but it's fascinating to me how do you get these things to match up aren't you doing some sort of high value calc in there no low value calc low value calc. no because there are no rules. Of course. There's no rules. Okay. The mock-up I just showed you, I'm guessing. Here I have a giant James Dean. Uh -huh. I have a pretty good size 51 Ford with Rock Hudson driving it. Yeah. I have a medium-sized mansion in the background, and I have a tiny Liz Taylor. Yeah. I'm guessing that the effect will be what it'll be. And then there's no, I'm not wrong or right, it'll be what it'll be, yeah, yeah. and people will do what they want with it. Well, you've also got James Dean up there as Thor. Yeah. You know, he's, <laughs> he's, he's got both hammers in his hands, and he's bigger than all of it. I know. He? It's a crucifixion kind of a thing, yeah. too. It looks yeah. like yeah. Uh, And I'm a James Dean fan, so uh, he had to be the biggest one. But, um, you know, there's no, since, since there's no rules, I don't worry about it. I sign off on whatever's going to happen, but I'm thinking about it every night. I'm thinking about of course. it. When I go to bed, you know, should Liz Taylor be four foot tall? Or maybe life size six foot. I don't know. The mansion. You know, I'm thinking a lot of things. Then I just have to make a decision, uh -huh. uh, and, it, and then it just. But I'm I'm really excited about this. Do you do it on the spot? Make the decision on the spot. Now nah, she's got. We got to lose four feet off of Liz Taylor. Take it off of the bottom. Well, what I'm making my little squares for each 
each piece is done in a grid system, I make there's a, there's a point where I made the decision, and it might be just okay, damn it, just do it. Uh -huh. Like instead of six inch squares, they're five inch squares. I see. Then I just I've decided, and that scales the whole thing up. That scales it up. Each one is different, but I want them to be relative to each other in a yeah. certain way. And uh, but but I didn't know the part about you turning around and seeing my work and uh -huh. thinking about having doing something for yourself. Yeah. But what it led to ultimately was one of the best ideas for the mural is that their sound coming from that car, oh, yeah, yeah. which is not my idea, it was your idea. Well, actually, it was Terry Allen's idea. Terry Because you had worked with Terry Allen. That's right. right. Terry, project. Well, he did that thing at, at Austin Contemporary. If you, if you guys can find an Austin Contemporary uh, it's a great piece. picture. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's called Road Angel. It's a 1952 wrecked Chevrolet Bel Air. And I thought, what an inspired idea. Yes. And so when you, did you ever see it installed? I mean, not in a video you know, of it. I've seen videos video. and pictures. Yeah. yeah. Well, the video is, is moving to me as well because here's this wrecked car. And in the video I have, there is a, there is a patron and her son. You assume it's her son. She's in her twenties and he's in his threes. And they're walking around the car and there's nobody else there. And mom is a little clueless. First of all, because it's, an installed statue of a bronze 1952 Chevrolet in the middle of the yard and second of all because of why is this here what makes this happen and as she and I and I have this captured on video and as she walks back and forth the uh, the little boy I think it says uh, something along the line of is there music or is there a radio or as he says something it's you know way off of perspective and, and size and she says well there could be or something like that and that's all that's mentioned and you can barely hear it barely hear it I, I, but there's enough sound that you can hear it and there are people up in the background unloading uh, picnic baskets and stuff and getting ready to sit down and have a picnic near <laughs> next to the wrecked Chevy well. <laughs> and I thought it was so incredible for Terry to have put that together. And I had just finished working with him on another installed piece at the, uh, at the museum, the actual museum house. And uh, in that, he had called for music from people who were steeped in that Texas culture. So I sent him a song called uh, Dance of Mother and Child. And uh, he said, this is the weirdest song ever in the world, but I'm putting it in because I love it. And it's just exactly right. So when Jess said, let's let's do this with John, he's on for it, and all we have to do is pay for it. And I said, that's simple on our side. I said, but you know, how about contribution? She said, well, why don't you come up with some music like Terry did? So that's where the music came from, from his idea and pushing it forward well, to our desk. Well, it's kind of a seminal moment for me because I'd worked, I'd worked with Jess and Jerome on their daughter on East on the side of their uh, market and uh, she sent me an email because she must have shown you the mock-up which I showed you yeah. and he said Michael Nesbitt I didn't even know she was working for you at the time yeah. Michael Nesbitt seems to think that uh, there should be music coming from that car and my first thought was first of all the Michael Nesbitt <laughs> he thinks there should be music I'm not gonna doubt that but I hadn't <laughs> thought about it then I started thinking logistically well wait a minute people are driving by how are they going to hear the music? Right. Well, nowadays, people stop. Everybody stops. And yeah, they're yeah. going to stop for this. I know they will. Yeah. To take their selfie. And would it, it would be a very cool thing. There's music drifting out of that car. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, it's Western music. And you didn't ask for it, but I oh. wanted your music because I love your music. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it, it's, it's, it's going to be that. Well, it wasn't the first time you did it because of the, the incredible installation of trees. Yes. The one. San the, Diego. Oh, yeah. man. And I remember, uh, I think. It was either my mother, or it was my wife at the time, said, you've got to go see this. So then I, I backed into it, did all the research that was available on the web and so forth, after I'd seen it. But when I walked through there, I thought, this is the incorporation of sound in one of these things that makes it much more lifelike. Yes. You know, it's like being in a, uh, in front of a, of a motion picture of a, of a waterfall and then hearing a speaker playing a waterfall 
someplace else. Yes. It, it just starts to envelop and the more the in. senses are involved. Yeah. It'll it'll be more memorable for the viewer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They'll think of that moment. Music. Wow. Yeah. Well and, and you know, when I did the first national band, that was what I was trying to do with the first national band was to expand the moments to get the ideas of my great good fortune, Red Rhodes, who was a steel player. You love, love that guy, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> well, he, uh, I tell this story from the stage, but, you know, he was playing these celestial riffs and stuff that he does, did. He's no longer with us. And he was um, uncomfortable with it and not really making it all work, I thought, in the way that he wanted it. And he said, I just can't get myself set into it and, and I always felt like Red rode the steel guitar like uh, you know the the barrel racers ride a pony I mean they, they, they just, you just it's, you're thinking the same thing faster than either one <laughs> communicates with the other you're just doing it according to the great mind <laughs> yeah make it work and I said Red that is fantastic so how do you get those ideas he said oh I don't know I do I just, uh, go, but you know, <clears throat> I'm. Uh, I just feel like I'm getting sicker, and I don't feel good, and and so on and so forth. And every time I start to do it, I start to smoke, and every time I start to smoke, I start to feel bad. And I said, "Well, have you ever tried this?" And he said, "Oh yeah, I got all kinds of marijuana around. I get, I grow it in my closet. I got a hundred plants in there." <laughs> and, I, and he said, "I give them to my friends." And I said, "Well, try smoking some of it, and try playing while you, after you smoke." And he said, well, I don't know, it burns my throat. And I said, well, you don't have to, you have to smoke it, then you can do an edible. Because edibles don't have any effect other than just to get you swacked. Yeah. And he said, okay. And he did. And, uh, well, the story about it, he said, well, what can I eat it with? I said, any edible substrate's going to work. You know, <laughs> licorice, whatever you a want. A cookie. A cookie, whatever, and, or a brownie. And he said, well, how about... Jeff peanut butter. <laughs> and I said, yeah. sounds good to me. So he got himself one of those little quart jars of Jeff peanut butter, and he poured a whole so coffee sack of clean grass he got out of his garage, and it was man, the aroma from that thing. And he got a wooden spoon and stirred it all up until it turned, you know, it was the Emerald City in there. And <clears throat> then he took stuffed a spoon in it and took a bite of it and he said yeah I can I can work with this and <laughs> set it down and started playing stuff that never came out of a steel guitar Ooh, ever in his well. life. it was like it was as if Hendrix had suddenly <laughs> discovered another instrument or started to play the contrabass bassoon <laughs> it's like what but <clears throat> as these as these notes and the shards of the notes and the networks of the notes and the waterfall of the note started to issue from his uh, instrument, I realized I was in the presence of something like that. And same thing with what you're doing here. This is all coming from a place that we all recognize. And of course, red and it cold, and it brings something that's not there if we don't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I if we don't do it, it doesn't happen. <laughs> what I mean, makes me want to go? Buy some peanut butter <laughs> and, and see. Did Red leave anything? For <laughs> no, listen. I got so much dope around now that it's legal. I'm gonna start. I started to buy the whole store. I, everything. I'll take everything. <laughs> That's right. It's legal. Though. That's right. It's legal. It is here anyway. Oh, be careful in Texas, though. Right? No, no, not in Texas. In Texas, don't hold. Yeah. No, that's not a good idea. Oh no, don't hold in Texas. Don't hold. But if you're coming down to Texas, stop for a minute and listen. We no longer. No, you're good. Oh, okay. I, I thought. I was just going to say you can talk about the raffle. Okay. Now we got to get to the raffle. Oh. Because there's a. We're going to have. That's what you left me, Daniel. Yeah. We're going to have a little bit of a of a do. Yeah. You're going down. I'm going down. I'm taking the first national band down. We're setting up a stage. The Wyatts, who's who own the ranch, that this installation is going into, put in a stage for us. Well, they're not putting it for. We're building it, but I mean, they're allowing us to put it there. So we're going to have a, uh, a presence of the First National Band there, and then what's the name of the place that we're playing the Poseidon? The Hotel Paisano. The Hotel Paisano. We've got that thing going Historic on Historic Hotel Paisano. Yeah. Yeah. Where the cast of Giant State 
yeah. during the filming in 1955. Do they have this room still marked by Elizabeth Taylor? Before? Yes, the Rock Hudson Suite, the Elizabeth Taylor Suite, and the James Dean room. Not a suite, not as nice. The James Dean room is the only room that they haven't redecorated. They kept it as is. It's a little rustic, but people ask for it. It's always uh, always being used. Yeah. Um, so I had this created with, an, with a graphic designer, the image, for the event on the Saturday night, the 20th of October, um, just to let people know in the lobby of the Paisano, this is where it's happening. There'll be a dinner, uh, and then followed by, at 7.30, by uh, yeah. Michael Nesmith, the first and a show. band, uh, in the courtyard of the Paisano. So you and I will sign two of these prints, and we're raffling them off, because it's a big production. Uh, I'm donating the mural, but there's a lot of costs involved with your band, yep. you yourself, uh, your your people, uh, my friends coming to help me install it. So, uh, and the Chamber of Commerce have been very gracious and mm -hmm. they're paying my hotel expenses. Um, but we're raffling off at $10 a ticket, six for $50. If you want to go crazy, 15 for 100 <laughs> for the chance to win uh, these two uh, signed prints, 24 by 36 on a nice satin canvas uh, print. Um, we'll have the winner that night on the, on the 20th and we'll notify yeah. them by email afterwards. These are going to go in the living room of some fabulous home in some fabulous place. Because it's, uh, especially if, if, if you book in them on a, on a wall, the same person got both of them. No. Does the other one point the other way? <laughs> no. They both point the same way? <laughs> yeah. so I just never have time to get crazy. Uh, and, the, and the raffle closes on the 20th of October. So you can buy them in Marfa if you're there. Uh, small town. We're running out of hotel rooms. <clears throat> can they buy them at the Hotel Paisano? Um, <clears throat> we'll have a link online so they can It'll buy be them a link from anywhere. To, uh, yeah. Yeah. The best place is online. Get online and hang out and look at this stuff and go take a look through John's catalog and through uh, the music catalogs. I think this is some of the most inspired work being done today on the artistic scene. United States. Well, thanks so much. At a certain point, at a certain point, this is going to spread. This is one of those points. Well, I hope, yeah, I'll get, I hope I don't get too anxious about, you know, oh, people wanting, I do the tap, this happens sometimes. If I get a little burst and all of a sudden I get calls for stuff that I, as I get older, I don't want to do everything no. that people ask me to do. Yeah. And they get upset with me. <clears throat> you don't want to paint my little baby Jesus. For my you? garden, <laughs> I'd, you know, I'd love to. If I had nothing else to do, I would do your baby Jesus. But no, yeah, no. <laughs> I only have so many projects left in me. Yeah. Is there any way we can fit him into the um, trunk of uh, <laughs> James Dean's '52 Ford or Rock Hudson's? Is that a '52? '51 Ford Deluxe. They didn't have cute names like Impala back then. For the no, Ford, didn't I know? Yeah, convertible. Yeah, it was actually sandalwood beige in the movie. Every piece I've done is a little bit off kilter from what the actual movie was. Well, of was. course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? What else are you going to do? You get in that world, you can do anything. I yeah. Mean, so. Do you remember those cars from the 60s that were painted in paisley colors and painted like rainbows? No. Factory? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. They were, it was, uh, it was uh, the custom car thing. It was... Uh, like John Lennon did with his Rolls Royce. Exactly like okay. John Lennon. And, and what John and what Tom Wolfe described in Candy Color Tangerine Flake Street Streamline Baby. Those wow. things were, those were showing up all over LA. And there was one which was a BMW two door, a little sedan. Two thousand two? Yeah, I'd say. And <clears throat> no, no, no. I mean the model. Oh the model, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, this was the this was well, maybe it's a two thousand two, I don't know, it's just a two door okay. and and high performance in this guy who was uh, not of Los Angeles but from some other place uh, I'm gonna say Middle East perhaps showed up with this car and went over to a painter and said can you give me a rainbow across it front to back and like that and that was the first one I ever saw and it was a traffic stopper if he was at the if he, he was a red light nobody moved until he did yeah. <laughs> and it was <clears throat> You started to see that all kinds of places, and, and then then it started to get odd. You know, they make that car into a pineapple, and they do all kinds of stuff. But <clears throat> there was something in the way they were messing with the reality of the car and how it occupies its space. Yeah, and that's what you've done here. It's just 
you, you mess with it just enough. <laughs> so it gives it flavor. <clears throat> I think it's a I think it's an outstanding, magnificent work. Well, thank you. I can't wait to get my hands dirty digging the post holes for it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be good. Now, now, are you gonna be willing to come up and sing a song with us? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm gonna kidding. tell you. You sing. Um, <clears throat> what's the? Uh, uh, oh, I won't. No, I can't. Come. I tried it at karaoke a few times, and I was so bad that the audience got listless and uh, they called the ignored me. No, they ignored me, <laughs> which is the worst. It's worse than yeah. being booed. <clears throat> you can't remember the song? Uh, no, I'll come up with it. Well, don't come up with it. No, I don't want to put you on the spot for a fact. <laughs> it's hard enough for me to get up there and do it. I have to leave every last vestige of self-respect at home. And go and just say, you're going to get blown by the mighty winds. <laughs> so, Set your sails. <laughs> That's a, yeah, I can't imagine that. I know, no. I like to be, I'm a showman. Yeah. But I'm not, I don't want to be talking about it or be the spotlight on me. No, no, no. no yeah. I leave it and then good. I hope you enjoy it. You yeah. editorialize the, the place. Well, let's see. Now, this is, a, we're, we're selling stuff here from this Marfa thing. We hope you all come, but you all know that it's an arduous trip and that it is a, a very remote and it's one of the most fabulous places on the planet so if you can come please do come and if you come bring sacks of money so you can buy the artworks that are around there because they're exquisite not the least of which are, are john's now have we done i'm i'm talking to the lady who's shooting it have you done everything you're supposed to do yes thank you <laughs> you i can't i can't do it right now because she's creaking around but jessica can't do this uh, has been instrumental in putting this thing together. I'll be glad to get you on camera. Yes, I'd be nowhere without Jessica, by the way. She was Neither with me from the start. Yes. Yeah. No, thanks, Jessica. <clears throat> Thank you, yeah. guys. Many thanks to you. And to Anais for lending us her pretty little infant body to put on the side. <laughs> of the I'm, I'm appropriating your work. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to this as much as I have any Christmas. I mean, this is just going to be a great time. Oh, that's great. Wow.